Today I want to talk to you about Laurel Whole Plant Organics Antioxidant Serum that I got from Aurora Beauty. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Aurora Beauty as well as Laurel, the company. Then I'm going to talk about the product itself. And finally, I'm going to give you my opinion of it. My name is Sharon. Welcome back to my channel. I'd also love to hear from you guys. If you've ever purchased anything from Laurel, let me know what you purchased and what your opinion of it was. Be sure to leave a comment below. Also, if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you showed your support by giving a big thumbs up. Okay, so let's get started. Aurora Beauty sells products from a variety of different brands and they have the opportunity for you to try before you buy. So they have samples that they sell. Now when I purchased from them about a year ago, it was I believe about three or four dollars uh, per sample and there was a minimum of five samples that you had to purchase. I ended up purchasing 15 samples from them and three of them were from Laurel. Um, now they say the purpose of purchasing samples is so that you can patch test out the products and this is really important. Even though that they are natural products, you can still have reactions to them. So the first thing you should do is patch test them um, on your hair and skin and just make sure that you're not having any negative reactions. In addition to that, you can test out the texture and the smell and the color. Just make sure that it works out uh, for you overall. Um, in addition, the reason that I like purchasing samples is it gives me the chance to try some of these luxury brands that I simply can't afford to purchase the full size products. Okay, so Laura Whole Plant Organics, I really like them. I checked out their website and they talk about slow beauty. So they do work with farmers within a hundred mile radius of where they're located. And they're located in Sausalito, California. So they do have the advantage of the California weather. So all their flowers and herbs are coming from that area and they do work closely with the farmers. They say they work with artisanal farmers throughout the entire process, whether it's, you know, they're planning for the, the crops as well as through the harvest and they just see the entire thing through. They also make sure that the products that they are getting from them are raw and organic. So that's another thing that I like. The last thing that I want to talk about is their use of um, pure ingredients. So a lot of companies out there, even luxury beauty brands or skincare brands, use water as an ingredient. And I feel um, like water is a filler. And they actually mention this in their ingredient section on their website. So instead of using water, when at all possible, they are using hydrosols. Hydrosols or hydrolats or floral waters um, are part of the distillation from essential oils, or it can be a separate distillation process, but it kind of gets you know, the plant nutrients out of there. It is a liquid form like water, but it's just a lot better than water itself. And I think that's everything that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, Laurel, they do believe that plants are medicine um, and they do have a very small product line. So they work with a niche number of products. So I wanted to talk to you guys about this one that I got. Now I did get this from Aurora Beauty. However, like the other ones that I got, the other um, samples that I got from Aurora that were Laurel, they have their own sticker on it. Now I'm not sure if this is because it became pre-packaged to Aurora Beauty like this, or perhaps they've asked Aurora Beauty to use the stickers on the labels, I don't know. They do mention on most of their products that they should be used within 18 months. Like you should open them within 18 months that's printed on the date of the product, and then sometimes they say you use within six months. Um, now this is an oil. Um, and it doesn't have any water or any water-based ingredient. It doesn't have a hydrosol in it at all. And it's not going to be exposed to water, such as a salt and sugar scrub, you know, is left in the shower and it's exposed to water. So I'm not that worried about the expiry date. Now, obviously, I don't have access to the full-size product. So I don't know um, when that manufacturing date is on there. And I honestly don't mind. I know that they say try to use within 18 months, but I feel like... Even though it might lose some of its potency, it probably wouldn't end up growing any microorganisms in it just due to the nature of the ingredients. So it came in a bottle like this, and I'm not sure how many milliliters this is. It looks like it might be about five milliliters. So the dropper bottle, the end of it, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but the dropper does not go all the way to the bottom, and it is, I'm not a fan of dropper bottles, especially ones like this that are tall and skinny, I feel like I'm going to be knocking them over. Um, and it is a pretty thin dropper bottle and it's just a regular oil here. So I wanted to discuss um, what you can use it for and some of the ingredients that are listed in it. So what they say here is they've got 31 beneficial active ingredients and it's for all skin types. Now the full price, if you were to purchase this, one ounce, which is 30 milliliters, is $96. So it's about $100 an ounce. And that's simply something that's just out of my price range. So they do say that it has powerful and potent botanicals 
um, and some moisturizing serum and defense oil all in one and you only need one drop. So you only need a few drops. Obviously one drop isn't going to be enough for your entire face. So what they do here on their ingredients, the first thing they do is they highlight five ingredients and they talk more in depth about those ingredients and then they go into their ingredient list. Now the ingredient list here is semi-long. The issue that I have with their ingredient list is that they don't use the INCI or Inky or Botanical names. So what they're using is the common or vernacular names. And this is good in a way because you can understand what they're using, but I would prefer to have both the botanical and the common name. And the reason for this is some ingredients such as frankincense. Like if you say frankincense, people will understand what it is, but there's different types of frankincense. And the same thing with lavender. There's different types of lavender. Um, and chamomile, there's different types. And they are giving you some information, um, but I feel like it's not the full information. Um, and they're actually using frankincense in there. So I want to discuss some of the ingredients. They have, the first things they have are carrier oil. So they have a hoba, rosehip, and rosehip is really good for older scars. Red raspberry seed, borage, evening primrose, almond, cranberry, sesame, Pomegranate. I did a video on pomegranate. I got mine from a vat. I'm going to link below and above. Pomegranate is supposed to be amazing. I couldn't really work with it because it was so thick. It was like castor oil. With that being said, I've been told that in small amounts, even though you can use small amounts of it, it still can have a big impact. You also have um, there's sea buckthorn, fruit and seed oil. Sea buckthorn is another powerful oil. So you, again, you don't need a lot of it and I've heard that it can stain. So if you are going to be using this, you know, regularly on its own, be aware that it is going to end up staining. Tamanu. And Tamanu is another one that's great for skincare. I also did a review. It's also referred to as Foraha. I'm going to link below and above. So both rosehip and Tamanu are good for scarring. Now Tamanu or Foraha, it seems to be better for newer scars and rosehip seems to be better for older scars. Um, Tamanu is a very potent, thick oil. Um, it's usually a bright green, but it can vary. The one I had was kind of a darkish brown. And you do have to shake it before you use it. If you put it in the refrigerator, it's going to solidify. It was one of the few oils that I ended up take, keeping out of the refrigerator because the issue with Tamanu or Foraha is the, there's sediment at the bottom of the bottle. So if I were to want to use it, I would have to warm up the entire bottle and shake it to make sure the sediment gets mixed throughout it. Then you get into some extracts. So they have rosemary extracts. And then they have a house-made extracts. You have kotu cola, calendula, comfrey, nettle, chamomile, licorice, red clover, lemon balm. Lemon balm is something that I am not familiar with this name. Lemon balm is also referred to as Melissa, which is another reason why I wish they had put in the, the um, proper name, the botanical name. Then you have astragalus, yarrow, elderflower, horsetail. So they have curate oils, they're having herbs and flowers, and these herbs and flowers are extracted into oils. Now, I don't know if they are using all of these curate oils and mixing them together and then putting the herbs in or using a handful of oils. I'm not exactly sure how they're doing that. And then the last part of this is going to be essential oils. So they have neroli, sandalwood, rose, carrot seed, myrrh, and frankincense. These are some very precious pricey oils. So neroli is an expensive oil. I have yet to try it due to the astronomical price. I do know that Avat, I'll link to that below, they have some neroli and it's usually three tenths of a milliliter. It's probably going to be around two, three, four dollars, something like that. It is supposed to smell like orange, like sweet orange. Um, sandalwood is again a precious oil and sandalwood is somewhat controversial. So I have been told there are ethical issues, or I know there are ethical issues with sandalwood. And some people say that there's no ethically sourced sandalwood in the world, and other people disagree and they say yes there is. So I don't know, I honestly don't know. Um, sandalwood is a very earthy scent, I would put it down like vetiver and patchouli or something like that. So it's probably something that I would not really purchase on its own. If I were to purchase it, I would definitely look into more information about the sourcing. And rose, um, rose, there's uh, two types of rose that are common. You have rose auto and you have rose absolute, and they don't specify what that is. And jasmine, you have a couple. You have sambac or grandiflorum. Again, they're not specifying what this is. Carrot seed is 
very good for skincare. It smells earthy and surprisingly, I really like the scent of it. Um, it is a strong scent and a little bit goes a long way. Then you have myrrh. Um, myrrh is um, an oleoresin or resin. And you have frankincense. Now they say their frankincense comes from Somalia, but they don't say exactly what type of, of frankincense it is. So the ingredients are really good. I like the fact that they're using, um, they have like three sets of ingredients. You're having the, the carrier oils, you have the herbs and extracts, and you have the essential oils. So that's good. And they also have very expensive pricey ingredients. Now the reason that I would not purchase this in the full size, even if I could afford it, um, is one is due to the ingredient list. I understand that they're listing the common names. Uh, perhaps I am a little more controlling, but I would wish to, they would have the inky or botanical names. And Josh Rosebrook does the same thing, where they just put the common names. And the other reason is due to essential oils. And as much as I love essential oils, I'm actually trying to avoid them or limit them in my personal care products for a few reasons. Um, first of all, I just don't want to get inundated with scent. And there's also the issue that you don't know the percentage that they are listed at. And hopefully they're pretty low, you know, you know, one or two percent or even less than that, but sometimes it's more. For example, moss, they have something called the Zen Physique uh, blemish or spot treatment or something like that. I'll link to that below and above. They use 40% essential oils. And that is a lot, even if you are using it every once in a while. And also, I am worried about sensitization. So what sensitization is, is it's basically, it's similar to building up a tolerance or an immunity, what you would do with coffee. So you drink so much coffee that you just get immune to it. And with essential oils, what happens is they either stop working or you can develop a reaction. And you, even if you're using this for weeks or months or years, a certain product, you can develop a reaction. And you're more likely to develop reactions in certain cases. Like if you're using a high percentage of essential oils, such as the one from Moss, the, the Zen Physique that they had that's at 40%, and if you're using it often. And also your body chemistry just comes into play, how sensitive you are to that. So I've given you guys a lot of information. I talked about Laurel. I gave you some information about the ingredients and my opinion of it. Um, like at the beginning, I would really love to hear from you guys. If you've ever purchased anything from Laurel, let me know what you purchased and your opinion of it. Please leave a comment below. I really enjoy hearing from you guys. Like this video and give it a big thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to get the latest updates. I will see you guys later.